Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about how to stick weld thin wall square tubing. Thin wall square tubing is so handy for many, many things. Whether you're building a shelf or carts or uh, all sorts of different brackets, you can just put many things together with this. So it's a really useful skill to have. Now, the secret to welding thin wall square tubing is that there is no secret. You use the same techniques and variables that apply uh, when you're stick welding other things, such as your electrode selection, the amperage you run at, and then when it comes to technique, you need to pay attention to your arc length, the angle of your electrode, and the speed that you travel at. And we're gonna walk through where each of these needs to be to be successful stick welding this square tubing. Hey, I wanna interrupt just for a second to give a little disclaimer, just that this is a challenging technique that will take quite a bit of practice. So uh, don't expect to leave this video being able to do this just right out of the gate. That being said, if you get a little bit thicker wall square tubing, you'll probably have an easier time uh, at it to get started. So I probably wouldn't start with as thin a tubing as we're using here. Uh, I'd get something a little thicker uh, and, and work up to this. Now, if all of these things are new to you or you're new to stick welding, check out the full tutorial that I've put together where I go over all of these things in detail and I'll link that down in the description. So after you watch this video, you can head over there uh, to get more detail if you're new to stick welding in general. Now let's walk through the two things that matter when we get set up, and those are selecting an electrode and the amperage we're gonna run it at. Now you're gonna probably need to dial in your amperage with a test piece, right, to see where it actually runs, because your machine may not read the exact correct amperage. When I worked in aerospace shops, they'd bring in devices and hook your machine to it to calibrate the dial so it read out the actual amperage. But for a lot of machines at home, you may be off by five amps or so. It's best to dial in your settings through testing rather than going off of a chart. But check out this chart that I've put up here because it shows the different types of electrodes and diameters as well as material thicknesses and amperages that will go along with it. And this will give you a really good starting point. So uh, in this case, we're welding square tubing that has a 60 thousandths of an inch thick wall. And so in order to weld that, I'm gonna select a electrode that I can run to pretty low amperage, and that's gonna be a 6013 electrode. And I'm gonna select a 330 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter electrode. And that'll let me run clear down uh, to about 40 amps. Now it's gonna be pretty difficult that 40 amps to keep the electrode lit. And I'm gonna run right around 60. Now as far as a welding machine, I've decided to use this Tombstone Buzz Box, a Lincoln AC225, because I figured this is one of the most basic machines that there is available. So um, either you're going to have something like this, or you might have a machine that runs DC and has you know infinitely adjustable amperage, and that's only going to help you out. But uh, we'll start with this simple machine, and I'll go ahead and set the dial to 60 amps. And as you can see on that dial, it's really a multiple choice test, right? You go 40 to 60 to 75. So uh, you know there's not not a lot of options there, but I think it'll work just fine for us. Now, when it comes to doing this demonstration, I put together some little test pieces and I have one little bit longer piece of tubing cut and then one short piece of tubing. And I'm gonna make those into a T-joint like you see here. And I'd recommend on uh, you know your first project or you know just about any project, it's not a bad idea, to get a little bit of extra tubing and cut yourself some of these coupons so that you can get some practice in before you actually run in your project. So now that we've selected an electrode, we have our machine set to the amperage that we're gonna use, let's go ahead and tack these pieces together. And I've cleaned off any rust so that we have a nice clean surface to weld on. And in order to tack, I'm gonna come in right here at uh, 45 degrees in and out of the material right here in the corner. And I'll go ahead and strike an arc and then just move back and forth a little. Now let me zoom in and take an arc shot here so you can see me moving back and forth, what it's gonna look like under the hood. And that's just to make sure that you fuse both pieces of material. And then afterwards, uh, it's important to go ahead and clean all of that slag off of your tack weld so that you have nice clean metal and you don't get that slag caught inside to reduce the strength of your weld. And not only will I use a chipping hammer to do this, I'll use a wire brush to clean any additional slag off to make sure it's, it's nice and clean. Now this is what your tacks ought to look like. You know, this is a, a pretty good one. It's, it's a little bit on the large side. However, if something ends up a little bit funky like this one here that I'm showing you and it's a little big, just take a minute and grind it down so that you don't take a problem from this uh, step of the process into the actual weld. So 
Um, it's okay to go ahead and do that and clean your tack welds up, make sure that you're uh, starting off with the best chance of success. When you break this down, you really have two types of welds. You have, well, it's a, a flare bevel joint really, but uh, we're gonna just call it a groove weld here on the side where you're coming in and out of the face. And then you have another weld uh, joint that's a fillet weld right here where it's 90 degrees in our case uh, on the side of the tubing. And in order to do this, uh, let's, let's break down the things that are, are really important. And the, the first thing that's important is your arc length. So you're going to want to light up and strike your arc and then move in and hold a really, really tight arc, right? And keep that pool, uh, you know, nice and small um, as you go along. So uh, you're holding a tight arc. The second thing is your angle. So it's important to be dragging by about 10 degrees or so um, with your electrode. So you're pointing it back behind you a little bit. And then also you're going to want to come straight in and out on that butt joint and be at uh, right around 45 degrees on the uh, fillet weld there. So that's the, the basic technique. And then movement, and this is so important when you're doing this, to make sure that you keep moving along the whole time, right? You got to keep it moving. So for the uh, groove weld here, I'm going to go ahead and strike an arc and then just keep a nice tight arc, watch my angle and keep moving along and you can see that that worked out pretty well. I'll clean the slag off here and the result is uh, not too bad for a stick weld on this uh, thin walled tubing. Um, I'll go ahead and zoom in for an arc shot so you can see what this looks like under the hood here. You can see I'm just moving that puddle right along, uh, maintaining the, the consistent width of the puddle and uh, come out with a pretty, uh, pretty good result. Now for the fillet weld, we're really uh, doing basically the same thing, holding that nice tight arc and welding along here, um, watching the angle and keeping, uh, keeping everything moving along. I'll zoom in here for an arc shot so you can see what that looks like as I'm just staying right up here on this uh, leading edge of the puddle and uh, putting together the, uh, the weld here. Anyway, these are the, the main things to pay attention to and the main thing for you to do is to just go out and practice and pay attention to one thing at a time, right? If something isn't going right, it's probably um, either your arc length is too long or you, your angle is uh, not correct or you're not moving correctly, assuming that your amperage is set right. And if you're blowing holes through everything and it looks like you're getting you know, your distance, your angle, and your movement right, then you might need to dial it back a little, and that's just fine. And if you're welding even thinner square tubing, there are electrodes available in 1 16th of an inch, but uh, I, I don't really use those ever, but if, if you were welding something really thin, that could be pretty handy. So anyway, hopefully these things helped to get you set up and going to uh, weld some square tubing. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below, and we'll see you next time.